stick around for this video guys because I'm going to kind of be a little bit more tough than the two doctors debating Anthony Chafee and Paul Saladino meat heavy meat carnivore diet versus meat and fruit they're soft but Steph's going in hard that sounds weird What is up my beautiful people? Welcome to my very humble channel. Now let's get into part two of me sort of reviewing the carnivore debate between these two heavy hitting doctors, Paul Saladino and Dr. Dr. Anthony Chafee. Now these guys are quite pleasant. Chafee, I like, he's very pleasant to hear speak. Um, Paul is a little bit, you know, but Paul's very, very, very intelligent. Um, I'm listening to him, okay? And they're being too kind to each other in my my, uh, my point of view. They don't say what they really think. And it's like they keep scratching each other's ass. I mean, it is what it is. But at the same time, it feels like Paul is looking, that's a fly. He's looking for the validation of Chafee. Like, do you think that's true? Do you think that's right? He was being very respectful. Um, I don't like debates. People always want me to debate people. But I, if somebody really is dogmatic and, and believes in something, I'm not going to go and try to change somebody's belief or ideology in the way they perceive fitness because otherwise you have people clashing the audience loves it i don't though i've been around too long for it but i want to pull up this discussion it's not a it's not a debate let's keep it real it's just a discussion and it is a very soft ball ball sack discussion and if you really listen to them it's all about their opinion somebody somebody said on my part one video um when I said they're just anecdotal and they're guessing, they're like, isn't that what you're doing? And I'm like, no, I actually work with thousands of people, thousands. And I've been doing it for years. Go look at the video catalog. Why would I use myself? I'm 56 now. I'm an athlete. I've always been an athlete. I'm super strict and I'm not them. I never did carnivore the way that that Paul has done with a bunch of, of, of fruit. I haven't done what Chafee has done with only eating muscle meat, which do I believe that? No. Um, I think that they're omitting things because they grow their channels. I mean, these are doctors growing social media channels. And as a side note, growing a social media channel sucks elephant ball sacks. It sucks. I don't like it. I think some of them really get high off of it, but I don't. Yeah. If you're a doctor, your doctor, you're like growing a social media channel, then perhaps using real people as your reference is the way to do it. Not these vast, that's a fly, generalities, or I feel that I do best on this and I do best on fruit. I'm going to do a part three where I incorporate Paul talking about the fruit. I think that Paul is a bit more transparent and Dr. Chafee, Chafee, Chafing. Anywho, let's get more into it. I said, hey, you know, I see that you pour some bloods on yourself. And I was like, yeah, how do you look? He's like, yeah, everything's looking great. So I haven't gone through those yet, but according to him, everything's looking good. And my bloods three years ago were all in very good ranges as well. Okay, he literally just said, and I quote, my bloods look good three years ago. That to me is somebody who's omitting the truth. And look at him look down like that. You know why? Because you would explain what your bloods are. You're a doctor. Are you talking A1C? Are you talking insulin? Are you talking about your calcium score? Are you, are you talking about your GFR? Are you talking about your reproductive hormones? They both say, oh yeah, I did my numbers and they look fabulous. Nonsense. And he's about to go into right now 
I, I don't eat salt, which is like, dude, come on. And so I didn't have issues with my hormones. Uh, well, no, I, I don't even use salt anymore at all. And uh, I don't get oh, that's interesting. I, yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've spoken to a number of long term carnivores, like, like zero, I'm so full of shit. I'm sorry. Carb health and zeroing your own health Facebook groups. They've been doing this for, I think, some of them around 20 years now. And, and that old guard people. The reason I don't believe them is it keeps looking directly up. Like, he's not speaking to the camera like straight on so he's sort of smudging i think what he perceives as reality or saying that yeah you actually don't want salt it can actually be addictive and cause you to overeat just like you know processed sugar could absolutely he just said eating salt makes you overeat no that's what the potato chip my brother I'm, i haven't really looked too closely into that but from my own taste perspective, I've always told people just salt to taste, you know, and your, your body can tell you. And I've just naturally just wanted a bit less and a bit. Okay, I'm confused. Sorry to keep stopping him. You're saying you don't eat salt, but you're telling people to salt to taste. What does that do with electrolytes? Oh, you're not a doctor of electrolytes. Yeah, okay, let's go. That's salt, and now I, I just sort of prefer the taste without salt. Even a little bit of salt, just say it tastes a bit too salty for me. So I'm still going by taste. I'm still just salting to taste. I'm not avoiding it. How are you giving advice when you're just saying salt to taste? I don't understand. So many people I know when they don't have, add salt, their potassium levels skyrocket. And they have absolute these hyperkalemia symptoms. They feel sick, nauseous. Oh, I can't. I'm just, you know, I don't feel I, I really need it. I just, I like the taste of the salt. So... I did a, I did a, um, a podcast video talking about, you know, is, is ketosis harmful? There's a guy named Georgie Dinkoff who went on with Dr. McCall and they talked about the different you know, problems with being in ketosis long-term. And so, you know, I went through some of the literature as well with a guy named Richard. Okay. Where are the, where are you going to list what the problems were? Are you going to, you're going to reference this, this irrelevant literature. Smith. And you know, we found other studies that, sort of had that uh, sort of a countering view. One of the studies. People in ketosis for two years, for 24 months, and they found that their cortisol actually stayed the same, their thyroid function okay. stayed. Okay, I got a comment on this. I think I'm in, I'm in one of those moods because it's the end of the day. I'm not trying to pick on Anthony Shafee, but I'm proving that everything is so anecdotal and they're not going by their own. They're not speaking about their own client experience um they're not going by their own experimentation with clients or talking about themselves it just sounds like they're guessing and when you don't go into more of a scientific understanding of hypoglycemia hyperkalemia vitaminosis this whole fructose ar argument what are you doing people are watching you and I'm not criticizing them. They seem like lovely people. Chafee actually seems more lo lovely and he feels a little bit more authentic than Saladino. But in this interview, I'm actually feeling that Saladino in his sort of high strung way to communicate is more uh, authentic than Chafee. Chafee feels so overly controlled and looking up, not really saying the whole truth. No. But let's continue with this conversation. Stayed the same and other markers uh, were either improved or stayed the same. And at least for me, I've, I've noticed that, you know, I feel perfectly good doing what I'm doing. And so I don't need to add that in. Um, I have seen people, especially with people that have been carb addicted, sugar addicted, when they start eating, uh, you know, fruit and honey, that that can trigger those sorts of that, that sort of addictive compulsion that they've had previously in their eating. And they can sort of go down a bad path. And some of them start eating a bit more fruit, a bit more. He sounds like he's just guessing. I'm sorry for all you people who love him. I'm not trying to be rude you know, schlong, but he is so controlled. He's watching every word that comes out of his mouth. He seems very pleasant, but almost to the point where you don't get the truth. 
honey and a lot more honey and a lot more fruit. And then they start slipping into all the problems. I mean, he's right about it. Like eating a bunch of sugar is going to make you addicted because Paul apparently can't say for certain has gotten his, his fruit sugars and carbohydrates up to 200 grams or something. This is not fact. This is what I've, this is what I know I've known from some videos and some comments from people on his videos processed garbage which makes me i've different. spoken to you know one gentleman i spoke to a while ago he said that it, it started with that and he just started getting more and more fruit and honey and then he was you know six months later he was back to drinking soda and eating pizza on the couch and he had sort of lost all the ground that he had gained and so i'm i'm very I, i'm i'm 100 in your in your camp as far as people should self-experiment and do what feels right for them and uh, and I encourage people to just eat more meat. And that's what I want them to do. I don't think everyone has to do exactly what I do through self-experimentation. And, and Okay, I'm encouraging people to just eat more meat, but you don't have to do what I want to do. It's like, on the one hand, he's like, no, just experiment. And the other hand, he's like, just eat more meat. He doesn't know enough, you guys. And that's why he is being really safe and very controlled with everything he says and nothing scientific. And he's not referencing anything. And my reading of the literature, I think that just eating fatty meat is what's best for me. And I've noticed that in my body as well. And I just want to encourage people to try different things, open their mind, like you say, and and try to experiment with themselves and just not be afraid of fat, not be afraid of meat. And if they want to eat vegetables, fine. But I don't think that people should be eating vegetables because they think they have to. They want to and they feel that that's benefiting them again he's all over the place i don't think you should be eating vegetables but you can do it if you want as a person who's got any type of gravity like dr shafee who's a doctor he'll get a lot more views on his channel because he's got md in front of his name he in my opinion does not know what he's talking about you cannot use yourself as a barometer to tell to give people advice i don't use myself as any barometer or gauge, I use the people that I work with. Go for it. But, you know, I don't want people eating that sort of stuff because they feel they have to, because I don't feel that they have to. And so just trying to educate them that way. But if they if they want to, I, I know a lot of people that include fruits and vegetables or, or yeah, even fruits and vegetables, but, you know, fruit and honey and things like that. And that's fine if that's what they want to do. I get a bit concerned when people have had serious carb addictions, serious weight issues. Um, reincorporating that sort of thing because I've, I've seen them slip down uh, and get quite addicted to carbs again and, and really to be honest i think that's his main argument like to become addicted to carbs but it's it's very interesting some people can't do keto because or high or fatty meats because their gallbladder is so jacked up or they have hypoglycemia so bad he's not addressing the issues that people have yet he's giving people advice both of them are, and it behooves me. Uh, you know, lose all the ground that they've gained. Um, I think that, you know, having been myself basically in ketosis for a long time, and now, you know, how I- Okay, he's saying he's in ketosis, but he's never measured it. Look at him looking up, see? See that? I'm sorry, Chafee. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to roast you. Respect. You seem like a very lovely person, but you looking up, son. You looking up. You're doing that weird look thing. I've been in ketosis all the time. I don't know. I haven't checked my ketosis. Okay. I have no idea. So first he says he's been in ketosis. Now he's saying he doesn't know. That's you what know? I was going to ask I, you. I check my HDL. Yeah, no, I see. Yeah, so I don't, I don't check my ketones and, and things like that all the time. I, I go by first principles. You know, I, I think that this is really how we. He was about to say I check my HbA1c, but he doesn't say the number. Uh -uh. Sorry. Evolved to eat. If you think about. You know, the Inuit or people during an ice age, they really didn't have anything else except meat to eat anyway. And so they had to live generation after generation after generation just eating meat predominantly. You know, maybe they had some other stuff. Uh, Look at him. Look at him touch his nose. That is not true. They did not eat meat predominantly. They used to take blubber and bury it and eat it during, through the winter. Uh-uh. It's, it's tough because he seems like a nice guy. And I think that if it was Paul that was talking, Paul has way more research done. But then Paul is, Paul's also bringing up this whole fruit argument, which I might even do a part three on. 
but let's continue. I'm going to break this up. As well, but it's hard to Organs. find. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, 100%, you know, and, and you know, they would have, but, but animals, you know, and animal you know, when foods, you're in, yeah. yeah, when you're in the Arctic Circle, or you're in the north during an ice age, really not much else to eat. And so, you know, just being in that state of ketosis, I think there's, I think that, that eating. I think Paul's going to bring this up that that Inuit have a hard time being in ketosis. They weren't actually in ketosis. And he's saying that they're in ketosis. And look at him looking up. This is the look up of I don't know. Sorry, Anthony, I'm not trying to roast you. I'm not trying to be like Barcade. But I'm just reviewing what they're doing. Meat is our natural state. And I think that, you know, we see this uh, in, in different populations where they're living generationally. And I've been just eating meat for six years and five years in my early twenties. And I didn't run into any of these problems. So I, I, that, you know, lens. What problems did you not run into? I don't understand why you guys can't see through all of this. Look, see through the comments where he doesn't really tell you much. What I've experienced. I haven't really had anything. He says A1C, but it doesn't say the number. He's just leaving himself open for someone like me to see right through it all. It's me to think, well, maybe there's something else, maybe something else that, that you and I are doing differently that have affected us differently. Um, because I haven't had that, uh, that issue. One point that, that some people make, like, I haven't had that issue. What issue? What? <laughs> uh, um, you know, Bart K is that, you know, if you eat a large bowl, I, I, I don't, don't know who that is, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I know, and, and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I, I, sorry that he, uh, you know, gets a bit vitriolic in his, um, in his videos, but one thing that, one thing that he did say was that if you're eating a large bolus of protein, that that could transiently. Okay. So Barke is saying that if you eat a lot of protein that could transit transiently make your blood sugar spike. And I'm pretty sure because Barke used to interview me that he got that information from me and how I obtained that information isn't by checking my own blood sugar. It was checking all these thousands and thousands of clients over the years. So it's very interesting Hmm, that he brought up Barke and <laughs> Paul's like, who's that? raise your, your insulin levels and kick you out of ketosis. And, uh, and that, that could be very beneficial. It could be, I mean, again, I've never checked my ketones or my blood sugar, HbA one c Yes. I've checked that. And that's always, that's always been good. It's always been good, but you won't say the number. I know people are freaking out that love him, but bear with me. But I just let my body do what it's supposed to do. If I'm eating a big, and I generally do do that. I generally eat a, just a one big massive this is a doctor who's like, I'm just going to allow my body to do what it does. And you're giving people advice, bro. Meal a day. And that's what I feel best doing. And, you know, if I'm in ketosis that whole time or I'm in and out of ketosis, I'm happy with that. I don't, I don't really mind. I just, you don't know if you're in ketosis. Mm. Trust in my body. I'm giving my body the inputs that it needs and it's going to do what it needs with that. Yeah. A couple of points on that. Um, so Paul's like, no, <laughs> Paul, his electrolytes tanked. He actually said it in this video. Um, I know that he listened to Chafee and did not say what he really thought. So that's lame. You should have said what you really thought, Paul. Well, you know, the Inuit are almost never in ketosis. There's actually research looking at mm -hmm. the Inuit and they're not in ketosis. Okay. Sorry, not to cut, cut him off again, but he is challenging him in a very softball way. So I just got done saying he wasn't challenging him, but here he did this one little softball looking down, look at him look down. And then interestingly, so there's a couple of papers that I was looking at and I'll quote from the papers. They say that traditional Inuit diets derive approximately 50% of their calories from fat, 30 to 35 from protein and 15 to 20% of their calories Okay, I want to stop and maybe do a part three because I don't want these videos to get too long. But he just said, um, Ch Anthony Chafee said that the Inuit ate a meat predominant based diet. Here is Paul saying by some uh, study response to customary high fat that they ate a 50-50 diet. Can you, um, mm, ooh, I can't with it. Mm-mm. 
Okay, guys, I'm going to do a part three. They say it's it's a very pleasant, I mean, very nice, very respectful, so kudos for them, conversation between them. It's not a debate. He called it a debate. They both have huge names. And as you can see, Paul's actually coming a little bit more with things, but he's talking about fruit like Chafee talks about high meat. But I will do that in a third video. When they start pushing something, there's no data. There's just opinions. When one has facts then the other one and then he's like well the inuit actually ate a 50 50 blend of fat and protein and whereas chafee just said oh they ate predominantly meat right there you guys got to stop listening stop being so um swayed and believing so much in these people because they've got md next to their name they get zero nutritional education whatsoever so what is giving them the the i guess the first right to then tell people what to eat i don't go by my me anyone who's followed me for years knows that i don't give advice based on myself which is why i never show uh what i eat in a day because people will just copy you i'm very very careful i started coaching three different diets because people were getting sick with the gallbladder with hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, with histamine issues, with gout from too much protein, uric acid, purines, urea, their bun levels, their creatinine levels, their liver function, everything is going either down with like their GFR or their liver en enzymes going up because they keep following bad advice because like Chafee is like, well, I just do it and it's fine. I just eat, I don't eat salt. You know, who cares about the electrolytes? Like I just get it from salt. And then we don't know if things have gone wrong. Whereas Paul actually, who's not my favorite, actually he's more forthright. He's like, yeah, I tanked, everything tanked doing a strict carnivore diet. So where is Chafee actually being honest with him looking up and touching his nose and doing all this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I really respect that they were respectful to each other. And that's about it. That's all about, that's all I got. There was nothing that they said that was groundbreaking for me they really just prove that they're just going by their own experience. So be careful, my people. I'll do part three. Energy, sort of. I caught up real early because I'm doing my land. Yes. Go to stephanieperson.com and book a consultation where I will not go over what I eat, but what I think you should do based on your lifestyle, what time you wake up, what time you go to bed, any prior illnesses you might have, histamine, any issues that you might have like a gallbladder or thyroid, because if you're going to go after what I do, I have no gallbladder problem. So I can't put you on what I eat. We got to cartel it and design it around you. So if you need help directly book a consultation, or you can go to Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagram, Stephanie, the business business person on my Facebook fan page. I just turned 56 and counting. So excited to get older. Don't be afraid to get older. It can be very amazing. Uh, also, oh, I got a course where I cover all three diets because nobody can just do one. You're all different with different issues. Or I have a course page. No, that's where I cover all three diets. I have too many things going on. Comment below, my people. Tell me what you think. Just give some peace of mind. If you follow these people and have become confused on a carnivore diet or even a keto diet or even low carb high fat and i'm out energy 56 i'm so excited my land is getting going my house mm, 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 mm. and i'm out peace